Imagine the world of Minecraft transformed into a mysterious realm of vast forests and sweeping mountains, a world where cold, hunger, and thirst are always waiting to claim careless travelers, a world inhabited by dragons lurking over every hill and around every corner. But amidst the ruins and wilderness, one may still find mighty castles protecting their citizens from what lies beyond their walls. I myself, a weary traveler, find that I am stranded thousands of blocks from my home castle. Not only must I make the perilous journey home, but I must also defeat the dragon that has long besieged my castle. In this video, I spend 100 days in the Middle Ages in Minecraft with the goal of liberating my castle and securing my very own dragon egg. This mod pack will not be available on its own, but eventually will be incorporated into my mod pack Epoch Runner. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. And now, I present the Middle Ages in Minecraft. Oh, well, that was kind of a long night. I seem to have misplaced everything, and I certainly didn't get very much sleep, although that might be because there is a dragon nearby. But luckily it's not here right now. I suppose it could always be worse. Worse than having nothing in the middle of the wilderness, thousands of blocks from my home. I camped near this big jungle structure temple thingy. That's pretty cool. There might be some stuff here that I can find, although I kind of have to be careful, because it's a little bit hot in this biome. So far, I'm not seeing a lot. Although it's a very scenic looking place, this is actually pretty cool, this is water here. I'm a big fan of it, but there's not much stuff. All I have are some sticks. I need to collect gravel so that I can get some flint for some tools. Oh, that's a big bird thing, although that doesn't look like any bird I've ever seen. I probably don't want to go close to it. Just in case, I'm going to assume that everything wants to kill me, it's probably a good idea. Well, I found some more gravel, and I looks like I've got some flint finally, although I'm also about to overheat. So if I bang this flint on the rock, I can get these little flint shards and use it to make a flint knife. Oh, look at this. There's like a cave here, and there's some corn. I can not use that. I'm going to need food. Food is not going to be easy to get. So I can use the flint knife to cut up these flowers, and I get these little plant fiber things, which I can use to make some plant string. Now I have the ability to make a flint hatchet. With this hatchet, I can chop down trees, which are, of course I need to do. I need to get some wood. Well, I kind of ran away from the dragon area just in case it shows up, and I can use my hatchet to whack these logs and get planks. Although you get very few planks, unfortunately. But now that I have a crafting table, I can make a flint pickaxe, and there happens to be this big stone mound over here, near this little beach that has a bunch of coal, and obviously I can get stone from it if I need to. It even has clay, a little depression in the ground nearby, which is great because I need some clay. Unfortunately, it's becoming nighttime. Also, I am overheating, which is bad, and I don't want to die of heat stroke. Although this is coinciding with nighttime, so I probably won't be too hot, even at night in this tropical biome. Anyways, I got a piece of bone from a tumbleweed because that's how that works. And I can use that to make this bone knife thingy. And with it, I can make these little whittling sticks. And with that, I can start a fire. Because you see, torches don't actually start lit. They are unlit when you craft them. And you have to have some way to light them on fire. Otherwise, it's going to be very dark and very scary. Once you have them lit, you just have to make sure they stay lit. Because you can light more torches with them. As long as, they, as long as you have at least one lit torch. Now I'm going to use my whittling sticks and start a fire on this log. Underneath a clay kiln. That's why I got the clay. I can use this kiln to make a low-grade charcoal block. And the nice thing about this is that it actually will stay on fire, kind of like netherrack. Which is super nice, because I have a stone grill and I can use that grill to cook my corn. It seemed safe enough to venture outside my house to get some wood and also to harass the local fish in the little lake. As long as I'm near this water, I guess I won't be really running out of food since there's lots of fish here. There's also zombies, but that's not as appetizing. Well, morning has arrived and I survived the first night, mainly by hiding in this little, like, little hole in the ground, but it worked. There's tons of birds nearby. I don't think I can eat the birds, and I don't really want to anyways, because they're pretty cool looking. I thought I'd go and do a little bit of exploring around the area before I tried to journey home, and it uh, didn't take very long to find a gigantic pyramid ziggurat thing, <laughs> which I probably won't explore. I mean, I barely have anything. I'm sure there's stuff in there which will try to kill me. There's a whole lot of nothing in this treehouse as well, unfortunately. I thought there might be something there. 
I did manage to find some gardens which drop a bunch of food when broken, so I got a little bit more food. I also discovered that your torches get put out when you go underwater, which is a little unfortunate. It's realistic, but a little bit too realistic, maybe. I went back to the big jungle temple and didn't find anything in there. I did a little bit of looking around, and also I, I don't really have the capability to break through the whole thing trying to find something. Oh no, the dragon found me. I didn't think it was that close, but it's still here. I thought it might have gone away. No, no, I need to run away. This is very bad. I'm already at half health. Let me see if I can hide in the water. I don't know if it's still following me, but I'm a little bit safer in the water because it is a fire dragon. This is very bad. Once they see you, it's very hard for them to unsee you, and they will track you from a long ways away. It looks like I might be able to hide in this underwater area. I dug with the last durability of my pickaxe one air pocket here. I might be able to hide down here until it goes away. I don't actually know if it's still here. Let me see if I can tell without drowning. Oh yeah, look at there it is. It's it's very much still there and it's coming closer. I guess I should probably make stone tools. That would be a good idea. It's now nighttime. I've been down here all day long and unfortunately it's still lurking outside. I can see its eyes. That's so creepy. I think my only chance of escape might be to dig a tunnel away from here, underneath the big temple. If I go far enough away, I might be able to evade it. Oh my god, look, at it's right there. It's still trying to get me. It's a little bit stuck. It's, I was there literally all night. Oh, let me see if I can run away. I might be able to get out on the boat now, if I go quickly, because I think it's stuck on something. Yeah, it's not following me. I might have made it. I, there's no chance of me getting back to my little hole in the ground with my grill and stuff, but I can make more of that. It's more important that I get out of there alive. Wow, so that was a little bit crazy. I wasn't expecting to have to avoid a dragon literally on day one, but sure. I found this house, and there's a little bit of food and stuff in here that's kind of cool. And nearby, I located a jungle desert temple. <laughs> it's a desert temple structure built out of jungle temple materials, and there seem to be a lot of skeletons in here. Which is not good, because I don't have a shield, and stone swords are kind of bad. Uh-oh, I- no, 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 I am almost dead. I gotta get out of here. I'm about to start overheating as well. Well, it's nighttime, and funnily enough, it might actually be safer to stay in here now that I got rid of the mon monster spawners. So, this does have an underground portion, but it doesn't seem like there's TNT down here. For some reason, there is a boat dispenser. And there's a bunch of water back here. Oh, there's a chest, although it's not very exciting. I found a few more chests. These are better. These have some iron and gold. I can really use that iron. I really need it for stuff like flint and steel, so I don't have to keep making whittling sticks. I was gonna go spend the night in this big castle that was right above the temple, but by the time I tried to kill sheep and get wool, it turned out to be morning, so it was time to continue my journey. Well, this is very scenic, I must admit. There's a, a bit of an ocean, which is actually pretty easy to traverse. I see a Medusa temple over there. We're not gonna go over there, that would be bad. There also seem to be a suspicious amount of hammerhead sharks in the water. There's even a dragon over there. This is a rather perilous journey. <laughs> I've come much farther since you last saw it, and now I am in the middle of this big plains area. And that is a fire dragon. That is another one. We're gonna not go over there. Oh my god, it saw me. It's trying to breathe fire on me. I need to go underground. Okay, well that's not, not that's not a dragon, that's a slime. That's not what I expected. I guess I'll take slime. Okay. I guess I'll take slimes over dragons. Well, I've been journeying all day, and I kind of still need a bed. And I found this nice pond, but there's a dragon right next to the pond, of course. Of course, there's, a, there's always a dragon. It looks like there might be a castle up here, though. Maybe I can spend the night in there. I'm sure there's a bed somewhere. Or, or I can make a bed if there's not. The bed might be glitched. Boy, is it nice to be able to stay in a house. First time in a while. Whoa, there's just some floating mountain above this. This is kind of a cool castle. But it is, uh, it is not my home castle. Best of luck, guys, with the dragon nearby. See ya. <laughs> oh, look at this. There's a bunch of dogs here, and I have a bunch of bones from that loot stuff. I can actually get some dogs. That's gonna make my life easier, assuming they don't die, which is a, 
a big assume. You know, I really thought this was hot spring water, but it turns out to be liquid slime instead, which is not really what I wanted. Very bouncy, though. Unfortunately, I have to go through a forest now, and you might think that's a good thing, but forests are kind of dangerous. They're often pretty dark, and nasty things like poison ivy and worse can sometimes spawn in forests. Apparently, good things can spawn here as well, though, because I found this weird hobbit house kind of thing. I don't think it's meant to be a hobbit house, but that's what it reminds me of. There's even a little bit more loot, which is nice. Hmm, a ruined castle. Oh my god, you guys all got stuck in the same cobweb. That's pretty special. Whoa, now this is a cool spot. There's this big lake in the middle of this valley. This is pretty cool. There seems to be another structure here, and it is some kind of big sandstone dungeon looking thing. It's almost nighttime, so I might actually be not too badly off if I just sit here for the night. There might be some loot that I can find inside. I set up a new little camp area with another kiln and another uh, grill to cook some fish and stuff like that. Cause I am running out of food, but once again, uh, I'm near a lake and I can get lots of fish if I need it. Oh great, it's one of these little maze dungeons, but luckily I managed to find the loot room very quickly. It's actually really close to where I entered. Whoa, look at that. That's like 30 iron ingots. That's not what I expected. Well, it looks like I can make some iron tools now, which will greatly help out. I'm going to make an iron greatsword, which is two-handed, meaning you can't really have anything in your offhand while using it. I wanted to make an iron chest plate for some iron armor, but it actually requires leather armor first as a base, and I don't have any leather armor, so I'm going to have to go with chainmail instead. I don't even have a pollution mod installed yet. Somehow we're still making pollution in here. That's a little bit unfortunate. You know, I've been hearing spider noises and there are all these cobwebs here, so I should suppose it makes sense that there's cave spiders. That was really close. Okay, yeah, well that's why. I mean, I made a great sword that it's two-handed and I was holding a shield. I don't know what I expected. That was kind of silly of me. I probably shouldn't have made a great sword for a small enclosed area either, but at least I can use this axe until I can make something else. Oh my god. Well, that was not very fun. I didn't find any more loot after those first chests. All that happened was I almost died several times. But now it's time to keep going. It seems like I have to go through this mountain range, which is both very scenic and rather dangerous. Eventually, I made it to the other side of the mountains, and on the other side was a big swamp, which is a little bit different. There's also a big castle here on the edge of the cliff, which is kind of cool. But I have to go through the swamp now. And sometimes there are not very good things in swamps. Uh oh, that is a bird, and I think I know what kind of... That is not a friendly bird. Oh no! It, it's one of the stupid like birds that shoots its feathers and the feathers are made of metal. This is bad. I hate these guys Oh there I got it. I got it nice. It was a dime failing some failing bird. Oh No, and there's even more of them. I just slept. I just woke up got out my sleeping bag and there's more birds There's two of them this time. Oh My god, this is bad. I might die here Quick, quick, eat the golden apple. Okay, I got one. I don't know where the other one is stuck in the water for some reason. Get it, dogs, go on, before it accidentally kills you. Wow, well they got it. The dogs did a lot of the work, that was bad. Well, I've gone a lot farther and there's several castles around here. That seems to be a green soldier castle. I don't really want to go there. I don't think those soldiers will like me. There's an even bigger castle over here though, and that is a... Oh, and that's a dragon over there. We're gonna not go that way. I guess I'm gonna go back toward the big castle. So this castle is actually a dungeon castle. The entire thing is filled with mob spawners and also loot chests. So I kind of thought that I might stop here for a little while, try to grab some loot, given that I have chainmail armor and I've got some iron that I can use to make weapons. It seemed like I might be able to loot the castle a little bit. But boy, is it dark in here, and are there a lot of mobs? This is pretty crazy. 
No, one of my dogs died. I guess that was kind of inevitable. I really need them to not go in there. Oh, look at that. I got a familiar stone. And it even brought my dog back. Okay, that's nice. Well, if I can bring my dogs back, then I don't mind them fighting in there as much if I can revive them. Ooh, check it out. I found a melon and pumpkin room. I guess I will be eating melons and pumpkins if I need to. Better yet, I found a hay bale room. And my first loot chest, which happened to be a food loot chest. That's that's pretty nice. I don't have to eat that watermelon after all. I did some research on the different weapons and I decided to make an iron rapier instead of the greatsword because, well, if I want to use a shield, I can't really use the greatsword. Plus, the rapier has a much higher attack speed and seems like it's a lot better, at least for my purposes. It even gives you some damage reduction while you're holding it at the expense of durability, which is amazing. So I actually had to add a backpack mod because I didn't start out with one, which is kind of stupid of me. But now I have a backpack mod and I need some leather if I want to make a backpack. And of course, I want to make a backpack because inventory space is a huge problem. Oh, that's not good. I am almost dead. I'm on the second floor now. Although I'm about to be dead and not on the second floor. <laughs> Unless I'm able to do that. Uh-oh, there's witches here. Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. It got me and all my dogs. I think I'm gonna bypass some of those lower floors and go to the higher floors where I imagine there's better loot because I haven't found any loot that includes treasure. It's been food and mob drops so far and I wouldn't mind some nice diamonds and stuff like that. The problem is, is there are lots of witches and cave spider spawners up here. That makes this rather challenging. Well, it looks like I got my leather. I got four pieces of leather so I can make a basic backpack, which is a whole lot better than no backpack. It turns out I can make a saddle as well because somehow I haven't managed to get one yet and it just needs more leather so I can dry out more of my cooked chicken on these drying racks and turn it into leather. Actually, you're gonna dry out a lot of it. I made a Stymphilian bird dagger. I'm still not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but it's, it's a dagger using one of the feathers from those nasty birds, and it supposedly is good. We're gonna find out. Oh cool, it looks like I just found a treasure chest. That's what I was hoping there might be up here, because I really want some diamonds and some iron. Not good, not good. I don't appreciate cave spiders. Ooh, another treasure chest. Yes, please, I will take that. Oh no, it did the creeper combo and I let the shield down. I'm so stupid. That's a little bit unfortunate. Well, I have ghost mode, but the second I get that stuff back, I don't have it anymore and I gotta run away. All of my armor is broken, or most of it is broken, so that might explain part of the problem. You did not just throw that at me and hit me in the face with a potion of poison. Oh, what the heck? There's so many witches in there. All my dogs are in there. They're trying to get the witches. Go. I mean, you guys can get in, maybe. I can't really get in there. They keep poisoning me. Oops. Where is the spawner? It's over there. I need to get over there without going in the room. I need to try to break it from back here. Nice. I think that was the last witch spawner. These guys are so annoying. They're also fighting each other. They've been fighting each other for about five minutes now. And they literally can't kill each other because they just keep chugging healing potions. It's kind of insane. Well, I got a lot of leather and part of that I want to use to try to make iron armor, but most importantly I need it for the saddle. And I found some iron horse armor, meaning that once I go grab a horse, which there happen to be some nearby, I can protect it a little bit. Well, it's time to leave. I'm ready to keep going back to the castle. I got a lot of loot. That was pretty good. And now that I can have a horse, my remainder of the journey should be a lot quicker. Which is good because it's already day 18 and I got a ways to go still. A couple thousand blocks. Whoa, this is rather interesting. Well, there's another big castle there. Oh, and that's a dragon. Uh-oh, and it saw me. No, no, not my horse. Quick, get in the water before the horse dies. The horse is a much bigger target than I am. Thankfully, we made it out of there in one piece. This biome I'm in is actually really cool. Minus the big poison puddles, uh, I'm a big fan of this. 
Oh, that's another dragon right there. There's so many dragons in the way. Look, at it's over there on the other side of that valley. It's still trying to get me, but it's... Well, I, I don't fancy its chances getting over these hills and down this forest. This is rather inhospitable terrain, although it looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It looks really nice. Well, I'm on the other side of the mountain, and there's more swamp and some plains down there. Just got to get myself down safely. I'm pretty close now, I think. I should be getting closer. I just have to get across this water, which is going to be a bit annoying. Uh-oh, that's a dragon. That is a big dragon on that tower. I will not be crossing that water here. No, thanks. I hope it didn't see me. Well, I guess I have to go around. And it looks like going around means going toward that giant mountain. Yeah, that's exactly what it meant. And now I am in the middle of this giant mountainous forest, snowy monstrosity, which is, in, I don't know, it's probably the coolest place I've been. Like, look at this giant river valley. If it weren't so difficult to traverse, it would be really cool. Oh, look at that. It's a big magical forest thing. Those are some huge trees. Oh, it's a little mine shaft thing. And my horse is getting lit on fire from torches. That's not good. I will always uh, welcome the opportunity to grab a little bit more loot. I found a little campsite, a walled-in campsite with some villagers, and it's next to some giant floating islands, which is rather impressive. But I'm not stopping. I must continue on. I'm quite close now to my home. So I found this castle here, and it is a very nicely located castle. However, it's not actually my home castle. I realized I was misreading the coordinates, and I went a little bit past my home castle. You remember that dragon that I passed by? The one on the tower? Well, it turns out that was actually the dragon guarding or besieging my home castle. That is where I was supposed to go, and, well, the dragon was in the way. Oh my god, there's more birds. They're not even in a swamp. Why are there stupid stimphalian, stimphalian birds? Here we are. I am very close now. There's actually multiple castles around here. There's two big castles, one of which is mine. And then there is a campsite here with a bunch of soldiers nearby. Probably gonna have to clear those out. And then there's the uh, smaller castle where the soldiers came from. And somewhere around here is the dragon. Oh yeah, literally right there. That's, that's the dragon. Somehow, I gotta get rid of that guy. How? I'm not quite sure yet. Well, this campsite actually seems like a pretty nice spot to hang out for now because it's out of sight of the dragon and it's already got some resources, including a big fire pit, which I can use for my grills. And then there's even some food here, which is always welcome. So there's all these soldiers wandering around the area. I'm going to get rid of them before I do anything else. Oh, you have a big sword. Well, not anymore. I went over to the swamp to go check out the swamp, but of course I got attacked by a bunch of birds shooting their feathers at me again. It looks like once you kill one, the other one leaves. That guy's just heading out. I was looking in part for bog iron ore, which is a fairly easy way to get low-grade iron. You can just find it sitting in mud patches and swamps. And then after a couple steps, you can get iron from it. What is that noise? Oh my goodness, it is a frog. I should have known. Why didn't I realize that it was a frog making that insane noise? I smelted some iron ingots into steel ingots on my grill because that's how that works. And I used said steel to make a steel rapier. The next morning I went and checked out the little castle and discovered a gigantic dragon skeleton nearby. Maybe these guys already killed a dragon for me. We're gonna assume that's what happened. Regardless, I'm still gonna go and steal your guys' stuff, though. You have a lot of very nice iron armor, which I will take. You even have a diamond chest plate. Wow, that's very nice of you. A protection for enchanted book. These archers really can't do anything. There's even diamond boots, so there's half diamond armor. Boy, I sure went from, I don't know, mostly broken chainmail armor to it out pretty fast. So I need to make this grindstone, this millstone thing, and it requires certain types of stone, which I'm trying to find. I found one type of stone that I need here, which is nice. Mainly I need this because I can't turn my wheat into bread very easily. I need to grind it up into flour, and that millstone is one of the ways to do that. Unfortunately, I need sand for it, and there's not a lot of sand nearby. And the sand that is here seems to be next to a dungeon full of weird blobs. 
I probably don't want to deal with that right now. So this millstone, I guess I can put in my wheat. And then if I break it, I get the flour. That seems a little bit strange. Then I can put the flour onto the grill and it will turn into bread. Next, I made an iron cauldron because I need to make a special type of wood like this fireproof wood called lacquer. And you have to make it in a cauldron. You have to brew some stuff. You have to take some plant materials like these rushes and you have to kind of grind it in the corn with some other stuff and you get this plant material. And then it's a whole process. You put the plant material into the cauldron with some water and you get this uh, special liquid or something after a little while. Oh good, it worked. I wasn't sure it was going to work. Apparently if I stick planks in here now, it should turn them into fireproof lacquer planks. And I'm trying to make lacquer sticks, because you need those kind of sticks for a specific tool. Apparently I can't actually turn my lacquer planks into lacquer sticks, so I need to put sticks in there. But the whole point of that was to make an iron Gallagher, which is basically a big hammer mallet thing. Which I used to make an iron plate, which I used to make an iron work blade. This work blade I used to strip the bark off of some logs. And then I turned that stripped log into a brick mold, a mud brick mold, which I will use later. I also used my iron work blade to take these pig pelts, which I had been carrying around for a long time, and I turned the pig pelts into rawhide, which after a couple steps you can turn into more leather. So I can take the rawhide and I can use salt from a big salt pit nearby to make salted hide and then I can dry that out. And that's one or that's several steps toward making leather. I can also take mud and put it in the brick mold and then I apparently get mud bricks from that eventually. In the meantime, I made a handsaw, an iron handsaw which I used to make a spruce drying rack which I can then stick my salted hide on and that will do its thing and eventually turn into some new hide. Oh, I don't know why, I was pretty stupid. I thought this was gonna take a long time, but it's literally just a mold. I could have taken these bricks out a long time ago. All I have to do is grill the mud bricks, and then I uh, can make this weird little smeltery thing, which is what you turn the bog iron into normal iron with. The next morning, I collected even more bog iron, and I collected a bunch of wood, because I was running low on vanilla wood types. I made a couple more drying racks so that I could dry all of my hide at once, and then I stripped the logs that I'd just gotten and turned them into these wood stack beam log things, these weird logs. With those log pieces, I made these oak log stacks, and what you do with these is you bury them underground, and you light them on fire, and after a little while, they're supposed to turn into charcoal, which is one of the things you need to use with the bog iron to get the actual useful iron from it. So apparently that's gonna sit underground, and I'll come back later. Oh look, I got dried hide. Nice. But that's still not done. I have to make tanned hide from the dried hide, and the tanned hide requires tannin, which you make in a cauldron from ground resin, which is from bark, which I already have, because you get that from stripping the stuff. I planted the corn that I'd been collecting while I was traveling and made a corn patch. Ideally, I'll live off of corn eventually because you get a lot of it per corn plant. Oh good, it hasn't been very long and I've got these charcoal stacks now. Fair grade charcoal stacks. I think that's the worst out of all the grades, unfortunately. It depends on what wood type you use. And it, I guess oak is not good. So if I put limestone, bog iron, and uh, charcoal into this little furnace thing, it should slowly cook into crude iron and iron nuggets. I think I'm gonna dig a mine now, because I really need to go get some stuff from underground. I, I really need obsidian though, primarily, because I need to go to the nether. You see, I discovered a certain armor set, which is very strong, and if I can make it, I might have a chance of defeating that dragon. Unfortunately, it needs blaze powder to make, among other things, so I have to get to the nether. Well, I found this weird lava thing here. I thought it might be a dungeon, but it's not. It literally is just a lava pool surrounded by cobblestone. Before I started mining obsidian, I went to check one of the nearby castles to see if it might have an enchantment table. I couldn't remember if I built a full-sized one in them, and it turns out that yes, there is actually a level 30 enchantment table already here, meaning I don't need 14 obsidian. Oh no, I see that the citizens here are being bullied by zombies. Cease. Okay, I need to not blow up the pig pen. Diamond pickaxe, that's pretty cool. Good thing I already had diamonds. Not to mention there's a, a large number of gold and diamond blocks in the throne rooms of those castles. 
so I'm not going to be short on those materials. There is my 10 obsidian for another portal. But that's the easy part. The hard part is actually surviving in another long enough to find another fortress and get blaze powder. That is uh, my next stop, my, my next challenge. I might as well see where I spawn though. I'm not going to stick around, but I'll see where I spawn. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> this is so sad. Oh, how nice of the game to give me an enchanted grave key. That couldn't have worked out better. You see, because that teleports me right to my tombstone, even across dimensions, apparently. That's pretty nice. Well, I am still kind of stuck down here, and my nether portal is up there. Although I did bring a stack of cobblestone with me and some wood, so I have actually barely enough resources to make it back to my portal. Well, that was a rather dramatic way to discover where my portal is located. It's uh, right on the edge of a cliff. So before I go checking out the nether more, I need a few things like this antique atlas because antique atlases will show nether fortresses on them even if you're not close to them, and it's a nice way to find nether fortresses easily. I also need to bring water with me, and luckily there are these barrels which you can actually pick up and carry the water in, so all I need now is some glass bottles, which is why I'm over here, because I need sand, and sand is for some reason in very short supply. There are no deserts near me that I know of, and other, other than near little lakes, there's no sand. I likely will also need these coolers, which require ice cubes, which I don't have, so I'm going to try without them first, and see how far I can get before I start dying of hyperthermia. I was wondering if I might find this. This right here is a structure that overwrote the bedrock layer at the top of the nether. How convenient. So if I uh, open up this antique atlas, you'll see that there's another fortress displayed on it. This is exactly what I was hoping to find. Well, I made it back down through the nether roof through another structure that overrode it, and I dug a staircase down closest to the fortress, but that's when I got hyperthermia and started dying. In other words, I am going to have to get those ice cubes after all. Which means I need to grab my noble seed and go on an expedition to get ice cubes. That's not what I meant. I didn't mean I wanted to find an ice dragon, I just need ice cubes. Neither did I want to find a cyclops. Luckily the cyclops doesn't seem to care about me, which is pretty cool. Whoa, that's a really big tree, look at that, that's cool. Well, there's no ice cubes here, and if you're wondering ice cubes, you get them by breaking ice blocks, so I'm just looking for some kind of cold biome. It didn't actually take that much longer to find this, though. I only looked around a little bit more, and then I found a big mountain, which is covered in ice, which will work just fine. The only slight issue is that it forms water when you break the ice. I think I got what I need, and I'm starting to freeze to death, so I should probably get off of this mountain. Oh jeez, all I wanted to do was go near the tree and there's a fire dragon. Of course there's a fire dragon, there's always a fire dragon, and it my horse is mostly dead. I actually need to put it out right now, otherwise it is going to die. That was close. Although I'm still on fire and I might still die. <laughs> well, all I wanted to do was look at the big tree and maybe that castle that's right there. But no, there is fire dragon. That's a shame. This biome would be such a nice spot. It's literally called an, it's an orchard biome. It's very nice and pleasant and would be peaceful if it weren't for that. So I've got my coolers and it's time to go to the fortress. Why is there a demon sheep? That doesn't seem very good. It looks like I'm still a couple levels above the fortress. I have to dig down more. What a break. Well, here we are. I found the fortress, and there are lots of blazes. Blaze spawner is pretty close by, though, so shouldn't be too bad. And luckily, it's one of those nice blaze spawners that is in a wall, so the blazes can't leave. It looks like I can even just stick my coolers here, and then I won't be overheating while I'm fighting the blazes. It works out really nice. I also need soul sand while I'm here because I need to grow nether wart, and I really don't want to come back if I can help it. Before I go, I'm going to obviously go get the nether wart, which is right at the entrance here, which is cool. But I also want to go look around and find what I can in the loot chest. Maybe there's some diamonds. I always need more diamonds. Well, there's diamond horse armor, so I guess that's something. Well, I've got about 16 blaze rods, so I think that's good. I'm going to head back now. Home sweet home in my nice outdoor camp. 
you can get a lot more blaze powder by grinding it in the millstone, which is nice. And the first thing I need to make are fire resistance potions, for obvious reasons, because everywhere I go, there are fire dragons, and there's a fire dragon that is, uh outside of my castle. It looks like I've also gotten a bunch of iron from my little weird smeltery thing from the bog iron, so that's cool. I can also add this resin, which I got from my millstone into my cauldron, and that should give me tannin, which will create tanned hide. There's a lot of big cows that have been sitting around outside of my little camp, and so I figured I might as well build a little enclosure for them. Maybe I can start breeding them, I'm not sure how easy that will be. But if they can just stay here and be safe, that would be a good first step. Well, I don't know if that's gonna work, I guess we'll find out. So my tanned leather has to be dried one more time, and then it gets turned into leather, or my tanned hide. It's day 36, and I'm gonna start off the day by blowing up this big uh, pyramid <laughs> that's near my camp because these pyramids have mazes inside of them and I really don't want to go through the maze. So I'm gonna use the TNT that I got from that big castle a while ago and blow this place up. Worked out perfectly. I exposed literally all the loot chests with only a few pieces of TNT. A lot of gold and some leather armor, which is kind of cool because usually you can cut up leather armor into leather if you want. Well, I think that's literally all in here that I care about other than mob spawners, so I am going to call it good. After I blew up the pyramid, I went over to the other big castle and yoinked the diamond blocks from the throne room. I now have, uh, let's see, 20 diamond blocks. That's pretty good. There's a specific reason I need them though, because I'm gonna be making diamond crossbow bolts for a diamond crossbow. I did some testing and I discovered that the crossbow from Spartan Weaponry does a massive amount of damage, at least it can with the right bolts. The only issue is I don't have any feathers to make crossbow bolts. Now, there might be some chickens in these castles, but there also might not be. I actually didn't find any. I found pigs and that's not helpful. There's also no vanilla chickens that spawn naturally. There are modded chickens, which would also drop feathers, but I didn't find any of them. I'm also simultaneously trying to get more experience because I need to do a lot of enchanting before I can go and fight the dragon. I want to enchant my crossbow, my armor, and then my sword, obviously. I ended up resorting to getting nether quartz for experience in the nether, which has its own problems, obviously. The nether is not a good place to spend large amounts of time in. Level 30, I can go home, yay. I made a diamond tower shield, which is a very nice shield. You can do a shield bash with it. It has a ton of durability, that seems pretty cool. I guess I might as well try to make that big boy armor as well, which takes a lot of steel and a lot of blaze powder. Maximilian boots, I guess that's what the armor is called. It is called Maximilian armor. Maybe I'll look up what the armor actually looks like in real life because I assume it's based off of real armor. So that is a full set of Maximilian armor and you'll notice that it gives you more armor bars than diamond armor. And it looks pretty cool, not gonna lie. Oh yeah, we're getting closer to fighting that dragon. I now have a really good armor, really good shield. I need enchantments still, and I need those crossbow bolts, and then we're gonna be good to go. I really don't wanna put fire aspect on my sword if I'm gonna be fighting fire dragons. That seems kind of counterintuitive. Doesn't look like I can enchant my armor either, so I guess I'll enchant my crossbow. Well, I still need feathers and I still need more experience. Unfortunately, I'm really not finding much of either. I guess there's some soldiers here, so they might drop some experience. Oh my god, that is an ice dragon right next to me. Why is it so close to me? And I, oh, how did it not kill me? I don't know what just happened. That was bad. Oh, I'm stuck in a pit in the ground. I gotta leave. I was gonna go in this castle and try to farm some experience, but not if there's an ice dragon right outside the door. That thing will walk right through the castle like it wasn't there. I found a big ore deposit stone tower thing, which enabled me to get a lot of iron and some lapis and stuff, so that's cool. And I eventually, I found this castle here, which is not next to an ice dragon or a fire dragon, so it's fairly suitable for me to farm experience. The only issue is I am freezing to death, and I can't sleep because of that. It is so laggy here because there are, there's 
so many mobs that are above me. Well, I got 36 levels, so I have three level 30 enchants that I can do. I have one feather. I think it came from a chicken jockey that spawned somewhere. Other than that, I have no more feathers though, which is bad. Given that winter has arrived, which is why I'm suddenly freezing everywhere, I need some heaters. I made coolers, and now I need heaters, which means I need little lava magma block shards. And I only get those from magma blocks, and what better place to find magma blocks than the nether? These heating coils should do uh, a decent job of stopping me from freezing to death. It's kind of worse than normal because I'm not really in a hot biome, I'm in a neutral biome at best, and I'm also outside mostly. Even these birds, there's lots of birds everywhere, those, like there's blue jays and whatnot, but they don't drop feathers, I don't know why. None of these birds drop anything. And I still haven't gotten a guaranteed sharpness four on my diamond rapier yet. I got a protection four enchanted book, so that's nice, but still I need my sword to have sharpness four. And I'm not taking chances on some unbreaking three and I'm not getting fire aspect. You know, I wonder if I can use these enchanted books on my armor. Since I can't enchant it in the table, I might be able to use the books still, which would be awesome. Feathers. I still need feathers. Do you drop feathers, Mr. Blue Jay? You do not drop feathers. That is very sad. Oh, but peacocks drop feathers, and those are also acceptable. I feel kind of bad killing peacocks for feathers in the swamp, but I literally have no other way to get feathers. Ooh, look at that. I found a hydra. That's kind of spooky. In the middle of the swamp, there is a big snake, and there are also these birds, which are the bane of my existence. Oh, I've been shooting this thing and look at that. It just healed and it's got like five more heads now. I, sh I don't think I'm doing anything. Oh my God, there's another fire dragon over there. There's fire dragons everywhere I go. That might even be a new one. Eventually I threw in the towel and started brewing potions of cold resistance, but at least I was able to create a bunch of crossbow bolts using peacock feathers. Oh no, I tried just enchanting it and it gave me only unbreaking three. The only nice thing is I guess I can put the protection four books on my armor. Oh, look at that. A guaranteed sharp four, I only have 19 levels and look how many books I've gone through to get that. But finally a guaranteed sharp four. Now all I need is the experience. Level 30, I can get out of this horrible castle now. Oh my god, look at what it gave me. <laughs> That's crazy. It gave me looting, unbreaking, and knockback all in one, plus the sharp four. That was totally worth it. I have no regrets. And I even now have a protection four on the bigger pieces of my armor. Well, I'm actually ready to fight that dragon now, or try to. I kind of need to brew my strength potions, but other than that, I'm ready to go. The only issue is now it's snowing and it's freezing outside and I really don't want to fight the fire dragon in the snowstorm. I don't want to deal with that. I guess I'll keep making bread and I'm going to wait until it is nighttime so that I can sleep and make the snow go away. So my secret weapon for fighting the fire dragon and any dragon is a, uh, a something called a scroll of resistance three. It's this kind of, it's this mob drop that I got a lot of from fighting those uh, mobs in the dungeon castle. And it literally does like what it sounds like. It gives you resistance three. Oh my, the dragon is already on me. I didn't think it would see me the, from that far away. I haven't even taken my potions yet or my scroll. That is not good, it's right here. I gotta go and get underground. go I got it I barely even took two hearts of damage that's what resistance 3 does oh my god that was awesome I didn't think I was gonna do that well and check it out I can get I got like these glass bottles I can get fire dragon blood looks like I got a few a little bit of dragon's blood that was a stage 3 dragon and for comparison they go to stage 5 
uh, meaning they can be a lot bigger and more dangerous than that one. Well, I've liberated my castle. That was one of two goals for the video. However, I still have the Resistance 3 effect because it's 10 minutes long. And remember that Ice Dragon that I found near the other castle? Well, I might as well take that one out if I can while I still have Resistance 3. It is slightly stuck, which is nice. Oh, it's unstuck now. Here it is. Yup, it's on me. Oh, let's go. I got the ice dragon as well. That's two dragons in under 10 minutes. You'll love to see. Now both of the dragons that were close to my castles, well, one of them's my castle, the other one's not, but both of the nearby dragons are gone, and one of them was even an ice dragon. That's cool. Let's see what's in it. It's a lair up here. It's a lair is actually right next to this other little mini castle full of hostile dudes, but it looks like there are big piles of silver. That's kind of satisfying. I'll take that. A little bit of loot here. There's some bones. Ooh, a silver chest plate. Not the most exciting loot. I mean, there's some. It's like some iron. It's it's fine. Dude, I just killed two dragons. I really don't care. You just get one shot by my crossbow. That's that's nice. Goodbye. Well, uh, there's a snowstorm again, but it doesn't matter. I made it home. I killed the dragons. I liberated my castle. All in a good day's work. So check out this silver armor. It's actually really nice looking. They did not have to make it look so cool. And it's not even that decent armor in terms of stats, it just looks so nice. What is good armor though, is dragon scale armor. Yep, you can make dragon scale armor, which I... Of course I'm going to make dragon scale armor. I got about 30 blue dragon scales from the uh, ice dragon. It's actually better than the Maximilian armor, or in terms of armor points. The only way it's worse is it's not enchanted, not to mention there is some kind of glitch that makes the Maximilian armor take no durability. For some reason it is invincible. A little bit overpowered. I'm gonna go loot the fire dragon, uh, the fire dragon lair, see what we've got here. This is the one that was besieging my castle, it literally is right next to it. Just a bunch of gold instead of silver, nothing too crazy in the chests. And then of course there's this little tower here which has some dudes in it, but they're no match for me, I've killed dragons. Well, it is day 50. And I am at last able to ride proudly and splendidly into my castle. I have made it back home. I've got my nice ceremonial silver armor on. And why are you guys not cheering? You guys should be happy. Come on. I think this will be my house. This seems like a very nice spot. There's a little bit of a mold problem in the basement, but other than that, I think it's pretty nice. The only downside is I have to actually move my stuff here now. Well, all my leather is done. I have some more leather, which is nice so that I can make more backpacks because I have to haul the contents of quite a few chests. I've actually accumulated a lot of stuff here while I've been arming myself for dragon fights. There's also a lot of villagers in here. Why are there so many villagers in my house? Did you guys not get the memo? This is actually my house now. Moving in is honestly a little bit more difficult than killing the dragon. There's some nice trees I can chop down literally right outside of my house, which I normally wouldn't do because I don't like to destroy uh, decorative stuff, but I'm going to build something there anyways in this space that I'm clearing, so I don't feel too bad. I've got most of my useful like blocks in here, workstations kinds of things. Got my armor stands. I'm going to display my armor and right where I can see it. I want to be able to look at it all the time because I can only wire one set at a time. I also need to put a lot of torches around the outside of everything because mobs can still spawn. And of course there's still about four double chests of stuff. Three and a half double chests of stuff I have to move. Which is a lot, even with backpacks. But I think I've got everything now and I am ready to fully move in to my nice new house in my castle. What a nice place. I'm gonna take these dragon skulls that I got from all the dragons that I killed. Well, actually, I have collected some of them from dragon skeletons just that were already there, but you get the point. I have three dragon skulls. We're going to put them out here. They're going to look pretty cool. They're going to be a reminder or a warning to any dragons that might show up. This is what happens if you try to take over my castle. Well, it is uh, day 51. I think it's time to start working on expanding the castle. You see, I'm going to start a colony outside of my castle. Now that there's no dragons, I'm going to use this big flat area out here and make a colony, a mine colony to be specific. That night, I ran around and lit up a little bit more of the castle 
just to make absolutely sure that there are no zombies. Hopefully, there should be no zombies. And then I cleared out the mold infestation in the bottom of my basement. And I went over to the old, like, red soldier castle. You see this castle? There's nothing here now. I already looted it. I don't really want this little castle right here. So I decided to tear down uh, some of the towers and collect the stone bricks to use in my own building. I don't need that many of them because all I'm going to be doing is adding a chimney slash fireplace area to my house. Because it already kind of has a chimney, but it's, it's like a fake chimney. It's not functional. And I need a place to put a grill and the cauldron. So I need some fire in my house like that. So uh, assuming I don't burn my house down, we well, should be pretty good to be able to brew things and grill whatever I want downstairs. The next day I went and I tried to collect enough spruce saplings to make a giant spruce tree because I'm gonna need a lot of spruce wood when it comes to building a new colony from scratch. I was able to collect enough of it despite my horse leaving me. My horse is running away for some reason. I get off of it and it immediately is like, time to leave. At least it's not finding lava pits, it could be worse. Part of why I wanted spruce as well is because spruce log stacks supposedly make better charcoal when you burn them underground, which would be nice because then you'll get even more iron. Anyways, it is day 56. I'm going to make a town hall from mine colonies. This town hall will allow me to found my colony. In addition to that, I have a builder's hut and I will show you what this does momentarily. And so when you try to place down something like a builder's hut, you get this schematic. And I don't really want an acacia builder's hut. I want a medieval spruce template builder's hut. Obviously this is medieval and it's spruce. And then I realized that I was using a builder's hut before I had a town hall. So while I was doing everything right, what I need first is this thing. This is a town hall. So you just position it the way you want it. And then once you're happy with it, you just place down the block and suddenly you have a colony founded. And now what should happen are some colonists should start to show up. And basically the colonists, as you'll see in a few minutes, are better, fancier villagers. Oh, look at that. I got a message. It says the first settler arrived at your colony. You should place a builder site. Well, yes, I will do that. I have a builder site already. The block, I mean. Oh, okay. Well, he's a little bit stuck, but great. So this builder site I'm going to place nearby. And it looks like it automatically hired somebody to be a builder. I already have another person. Uh, she's over there. But it looks like we hired this guy. And now he should start building the building. I created a building task. Oh, you need an axe, do you? Okay, well, sure. Here, here's an iron axe, bro. Um, that should be good, right? You still need an axe? Okay, so it turns out that he's not actually skilled enough to use an iron axe. He has to use a wood or a gold axe. I, he could also use a stone axe, but I didn't realize this for a little while, unfortunately. We'll check it out. Now he's using his axe and a shovel that I gave him to clear out some land in order to build this hut. You need cobblestone, do you? You need 34 cobblestone? I guess you need materials. You need spruce fence now. Good grief. You need a lot of stuff. Well, I need gravel. The guy needs some gravel. He needs coarse dirt, but it looks like he's actually building something now. Oh, you need more stuff. Oh my god. Okay, well, you can actually see everything that's missing versus everything that you have. Well, that's kind of cool. I guess that makes it easier. We're getting there. So, in order to not give my workers golden tools, since I can't make normal wooden tools, I'm going to make some Tinker's Construct stuff in order to make wooden tools uh, through Tinker's Construct, which is available. So, I'm making these stencils. These are for creating different tool parts which I'm going to make all out of wood. And it looks like he actually just finished the builder's hut before I was even done with the Tinker's Construct stuff. This is pretty, pretty nice in here. Got a little uh, opening for a basement to nowhere right now, but maybe when you upgrade it, because you can upgrade these buildings, that might turn into something. He also needs food. It looks like they all need food, which I don't have a lot of to spare. Anyways, this is a Tinker's Construct wooden shovel, so he should be able to use that, which is a lot better than gold. The next thing I want my colonists to do or my builder to do specifically is make a farm. For some reason, he seems to be overwriting the builder set, which is not good. I need to move it. I made a couple wooden hatchets, which should be usable as uh, wooden axes by the builder, just in time for my favorite thing, a blood moon. I completely forgot that we had blood moons. We hadn't actually had any before. And this is no good because my guys are undefended. Let me hire some mercenaries. And I probably the best thing I can do other than hire the mercenaries to defend my colonists is just leave and try to unload it. I don't want to be anywhere near them. 
when the mobs start spawning. I'm actually going to go underground. I'm going to go mining. It's one of the only good things you can do during a blood moon is just leave if there's something you care about. Check it out, diamonds and redstone, but mostly diamonds. I remembered that I had a fortune three pickaxe partway through mining the diamonds. I felt a little bit stupid <laughs> wasting some potential diamonds, but I still got 13. Oh look, it's a cave with a little monster box. Oh, that's so cute. And any, does it spawn dragons? No, okay, well, I don't care. A couple zombies, I literally don't care. Ooh, even more diamonds. Oh, I'll take it. It's very ominous looking. Well, I think the blood moon is over now, so I think it's safe to come out of here. Yeah, it looks like it's safe. Oh no, a mercenary just stole stones from a building. Why would you do that? By the way, that's not good. Hold on, are you guys like vandalizing stuff and stealing stuff? Well, you were supposed to protect them from the blood moon. But if they're, if you're just gonna like yoink everything, then I have a solution to this uh, problem. They're even stealing tomato seeds. What are they gonna do with that? They don't farm anything. Why do they want tomato seeds? There, no more mercenaries to steal anything. Well, he's trying to build a farm now, although it's nighttime, and when it's nighttime, they all race back to the town hall if they don't have houses, and nobody has houses. They're all very challenged in the home department. Oh good, the farm's done. So there's a couple other people. There's a total of four settlers, and that's how many you get before you have houses. So it looks like this person uh, got randomly assigned to become a farmer. Now, to actually have this person function as a farmer, you have to make fields. And these fields, you can designate with a specific type of crop to be grown. Looks like the farmer needs fertilizer and a hoe, which kind of makes sense. The fertilizer is not great though, because I don't have an unlimited supply. Oh no, my builder died, got shot by a skeleton. That's not good. Why did that happen? Everybody will be mourning the loss of the builder. Everyone's gonna be big sad. Well, bro, why did another one just die? And it didn't even say what of. This is not good. We are uh, suffering a much too high mortality rate, 50%. I will say though, they just respawn after all of like 15 seconds. Well, they don't, they specifically don't respawn a new settler spawns after about 15 seconds. Well, now my farmer is trying to farm. So it seems like that might be working. Given that all of the unhoused, all of the uh, homeless uh, settlers try to go back to the town hall at night, I'm going to have the builder build the town hall before building any houses because all of them will go to the town hall, but not all of them will live in one house right now, which is unfortunate because all of them seem to be angry. They keep telling me that they want to live in houses, which is understandable, but I kind of have priorities. Maybe they're bad priorities. Oh my God, another one just died. <laughs> well, I just made a lot of seeds, which hopefully the farmer can do stuff with. And I also am trying to get carrots. I'd like to farm carrots and wheat because then I, we got crops that can grow in the spring, summer, and fall versus I think the wheat, which does not grow in the spring. And it is still spring. I decided just to enchant my own diamond shovel and help out the builder with digging because the builder is so slow and will go through so many shovels. It's not helpful right now until the builder learns how to use something better than a wooden or a stone shovel. I went back to my original compound, my little fort area, and I collected a bunch of corn, which had grown in the meantime, and I will be using that to start a much bigger corn farm, because I'm going to have to feed myself and my colonists. I managed to teach my builder how to make coarse dirt, so hopefully if the dude just has some gravel and some dirt, I won't have to make the coarse dirt for him, which would be nice. I'm also going to make my giant corn farm over here. I'm going to start it. I need a lot of this if I'm going to feed everyone through the winter, because uh, it won't grow in the winter. Basically, nothing grows in the winter, so I have to store up a lot on uh, before the winter. I went to collect a bunch of sand and gravel and clay, as much as I could find, because I am going to need a lot of that uh, for building, and also, at some point, I want to make grout which I can turn into seared bricks and make a Tinker's Construct smeltery. So I can start making some other types of tools and equipment. As I've mentioned before though, it's not easy collecting sand. There's not very much of it around here. Same with gravel actually. Oh my god, there's another fire dragon across the water over there. I guess I won't be getting sand there. Darn it. Whoa, wait, why is there one right there? There's one even closer. There's another fire dragon actually really close to my castle and I had no idea. 
and it's it's just right there. I will obviously have to do something with those dragons at some point. I guess it's so, dang. What does what what do you have to do to get sand? I mean, I'm not trying to kill every single fire dragon that exists just to get some sand. All I need, all I want, is some grout. One grout turns into one seared brick, and four of those make a seared brick block, which is actually not like great. That's kind of expensive, so I'm gonna need a lot of grout. I guess I'm gonna have to go do something about those dragons soon though, so I switched over to my dragon skill armor, which I think helps if you're fighting dragons, or it, it helps protect against dragon breath attacks. So whenever I actually get around to attacking them, I'll be a little bit better off. I know you want a house, but have you considered living in the town hall once you're done building it? That sounds like a cool idea, doesn't it? You should have everything that you need. Actually, you don't, because your little chest is completely full of garbage. Never mind. I still have two unemployed citizens. They're not doing anything other than sitting around. At least our builder is uh, getting close-ish to finishing the town hall, finally. This right here is a lumberjack campsite thing. That's the next thing I'm going to have the builder make so that I can get a lumberjack who can start collecting wood automatically. That would be really great. And finally, the town hall is finished, so everybody can sit here at night and be safe which is good until they have houses. And actually, I'm going to have them build a house next instead. I'm gonna wait on the lumberjack and work on house. Maybe in retrospect, that was a bad idea. Actually, I would say that was a bad idea in retrospect, but all of them were yelling at me about not having a house, so. Well, it's day 73, and I might as well try to go get rid of those fire dragons. <laughs> at least one of them. For some reason, the fire dragon is swimming in the lake. That doesn't seem like the best place for a fire dragon, especially where I can just snipe it with my crossbow. Yeah, I think this crossbow might be a little bit too strong. That was about five or six shots. They were headshots, but that finished off the dragon. And there's the other one that I found the other day. I guess I can try to get it. I still have fire resistance. And for some reason, it also went into the water, meaning I am uh, free to snipe it with my crossbow. This doesn't even feel fair. Oh no, I thought it had more health than that. That's just kind of depressing. Well, I have more dragon skulls now. <laughs> I moved all of my workstation stuff out of the big path, which is going to be here in the town eventually. I moved it over next to the town hall. Seemed like a better spot to be. So this is everything that I still need for my uh, citizen house, which is the builder trying to build now. And unfortunately, the level one state tier one house or whatever is only good for one person, but at least one of four people will stop freaking out about not having a house. I mean, look, it's not like they can't live in the town hall until they have houses. Come on. Cool. That should be everything. It's only 20% built, but I shouldn't have to do anything else. What I can do, though, is harvest a ton of corn because it looks like all of my corn has grown up and it's just waiting to be picked. Well, I ended up getting over a stack and a half of corn or something, so that's really nice. And I added a second grill to my grilling area so that I can grill everything faster. These grills are actually in some ways much better than furnaces because they don't take fuel. They're actually free, as long as they're over a fire. Well, the builder is almost done. Just about there. Hey, we finished the first house. Let's go. I kind of want the builder to have the house, but I don't know if I can control that. It might auto-assign someone. Uh, yes, it did auto-assign someone, and I'm pretty sure that person that I... Yeah, she's one of the unemployed people. I was hoping that the farmer or the builder would get the house. So, oh my god, that doesn't look great. Well, I need another house, so I might as well start them building another one. Where there is actually room over here. I originally was going to put the town hall here, but... There actually wasn't enough room for that, so I think there's room for a house instead, which I will get them building. Off to work. Oh no, it's raining. Now all my torches are going to get put out. Ah, crisis averted. Nice, bright, early morning. Well, it's summer now, so I might as well have the farmer start farming the wheat field. I'd had her farming the carrot field for a long time. She can only farm one at a time, unfortunately. I still need more gravel, and the best place I've been finding it is underground, which is not that good of a spot. Just saying. It's not. I forgot I hadn't actually gone and looted that dragon layer across the water from the one I'd killed a few days ago, so I decided that morning, morning of day 78, to go see what kind of goods I could find. Maybe there'd be something more interesting here than the other fire dragon layers I'd been to. 
Oh, look at diamonds. That's cool. Three diamonds. That's unusual. I'll take that. Plus a uh, little bit of gold. I even went over to the pirate ship. It's in the middle of the lake. But there's not actually anything here other than some mob spawners. And since I have no interest in making an XP farm right now, you are not useful to me. The only useful part is actually this sail here because I need wool for beds and other stuff. And the wool and the sail is ripe for the taking. So I grabbed some shears and I cut down a lot of the sail. Still building? Okay. Just going as fast as he can build. There's the bed though. He should have literally everything he needs. Well, I'm going to take these seared bricks and try to go build a smeltery. Although we have a slight problem. Those wood stacks that I put down here a while ago turned into ash instead of charcoal for some reason. I'm not sure what happened and why they didn't turn into charcoal. I think they won't turn into charcoal if there's air somewhere, but I don't know why there would be air there. I don't think there was, although it could be wrong. Anyways, I'm trying to make the Tinker's Construct smeltery, which needs a lot of seared bricks. So obviously I just need some plain old brick blocks, but then I also need some special blocks like a smeltery tank or a smeltery fluid outlet inlet and then some kind of controller. I did a bit of an oops where I couldn't actually remember the correct controller for a little while. So I built a seared furnace controller, which is not actually the smeltery controller. So that didn't end up working. Eventually I realized that I had the wrong thing. So I went and made the seared controller, smeltery controller. The, yeah, it's a smeltery controller. I made that and it still didn't work. So I checked the Tinker's Construct manual. I checked it for the smeltery and I discovered that it has to be a minimum of three by three which mine was only two by two. So that would explain why it wasn't working. And unfortunately I don't have any more seared bricks so I can't fully complete it right now. I have to go get more sand, gravel, and clay. Fun, fun. Well, that's what I'm going to go do. It looks like our builder finished building a second house. So now we have only 50% homelessness. Or to phrase that differently, we have a 50% increase in the number of homes available. I went over to the lumberjack station and set the builder to start building the logging area, which will hopefully get done quickly. And this is so that before I build anything else, I can have a colonist constantly making logs available to me. The great thing is the colonists will replant the trees so I don't actually have to really do anything other than make sure they have an infinite supply of stone axes. I went and grabbed a bunch of sand and gravel and clay, anything else I could find. And I checked on everyone to make sure they're in their houses. And unfortunately, the builder was not in their house for some reason. Instead, they were getting killed by an Enderman. I don't know why the Enderman was angry at the builder. I don't know if the builder looked at the Enderman. I don't know if that can even happen, but for some reason, our poor builder got murked by an Enderman. Well, I guess somebody else is gonna spawn now, and also everyone is a big sad for half of the day. So much for building a lumberjack quickly. We don't have a builder, and even if we did, they would be too busy being sad. Uh oh, I think we have four female colonists now. Well, that might be problematic at some point in the future. I have two and a half more stacks of grout, so that's good. And everyone is still too sad to do anything. Come on. Like, we get it. It's sad, but, 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 but lumberjack. Come on. Okay, finally, there's a new builder building the stuff. Check it out. It didn't take very long because it's a pretty small building compared to some of the other stuff. Our lumberjack is actually a little bit stuck. That's a little unfortunate. But they're off to go chop down trees. All the day's almost gone, so I'll be surprised if they even get through one log. Oh, yep, time to go to bed. They did get one log, though. At least that's some nice proof that it's working. Oh, that's nasty. There's a big spider on the door. Feel bad for whoever lives there. So the other thing that houses need a lot of is cobblestone and stone products so i'm gonna make a mine now i want the colonists to start mining so i'm going to put it over here in this big stone area and hopefully it should start getting built it doesn't seem like it needs a lot of materials although i think a lot of stuff has to be dug out because it's a mine i'm not really sure how that's going to end up working but they should already have about everything they need pretty close except for this dirt Oh yeah, another three stacks of corn. Well, I don't actually exactly know how much needs to be mined out, so this could take a while, but Builder has lots of tools, so uh, she should be good. Anyways, I have a lot of seared bricks. I have enough to actually make a very small smeltery, but it's working now, which is nice. So I can make a casting basin along with a casting table, and I can start trying to make some cool Tinker's Construct stuff. 
Although I need lava if I want to power the smeltery. Luckily I actually have the ability to make lava from cobblestone in the cauldrons, in the iron cauldrons. So I'm gonna put a little cauldron burn pit, fire pit over here. I'm gonna have four cauldrons so that I can make four buckets of lava at once. And also I guess I'm gonna burn down the trees here. The only issue is it takes 16 cobblestone to make one bucket of lava in those cauldrons, which is kind of a lot. Why is my builder not coming home? Why are they getting sniped by a skeleton? They just died. That's very sad. Well, I guess that's what happens when you don't go back to the town hall and or your own house. I don't know if that builder had a house or not, but... Well, I got some more cobblestone so I can make some lava. Make enough lava. There's already one bucket here. Oops, I just burned up that lava. <laughs> I threw it into the fire instead. One bucket should be enough to start smelting stuff. I'm going to start with this gold because in order to make casting, uh, casts or like templates, you have to use gold or a couple other things. And I only really can make it with gold right now because I can't really make the alloys. Well, we are back to four citizens, but they're still all female. So the problem continues. Well, maybe that's about to change because for some reason, an Enderman just killed another farmer right in front of me. How's the mine going? Oh my god, why is there a sheep trying to kill me? Well, it was a demon sheep in the overworld in the daytime. What? Good grief. Well, I made more copies of the Tinker's Construct work tables, like the stencil stuff. So, I'm going to start by making a pickaxe stencil. Pickaxe head stencil. And I can make a stone pickaxe head. What I do with that is I go over and stick it on the casting table and for, and I uh, fail at pouring out stuff because that's a corner. I didn't realize that. But anyways, you pour out the gold and it forms a pickaxe head cast around the stone and then it deletes it. So now I can cast pickaxe heads. I'm going to put some silver in here to melt. I honestly have no idea what like kind of tool I'm making other than I'm going to make one that has a mining level for cobalt and ardite in the nether, which I would like to grab some of. So it needs to have an obsidian pickaxe head. Well, so there's a tool broadcast, and here I just made a silver tool binding. I don't really know if that's good or not. I'm going to make a steel uh, tool rod, and then, of course, the obsidian pickaxe head. This probably isn't that good of a pickaxe, other than that it has the correct mining level, so I guess we'll see. Uh, later on, I'll have to actually try to make a good, quote-unquote good, like, pickaxe. I'll have to look up some stuff, because I don't know much about the Tinker's Constructs test. Well, unsurprisingly, I'm off to the nether to go collect some cobalt and some ardite, which you can use to make uh, pretty powerful, pretty strong tool equipment pieces. Ah, there's a demon chicken. This is the first normal chicken I've seen outside of chicken jockeys. Actually, well, the first chicken, I guess it's not really normal, but... And no, it didn't drop feathers. <laughs> well, I have a, about, like, a little over a dozen of each of the different ore types, so we'll see what that can do. So I actually looked up some stuff on Reddit about good tool combinations and I saw somebody had suggested a bone uh, tool rod and then cobalt binding and pickaxe head. And unfortunately I put both of the ore types in the smeltery at once and accidentally created the alloy manulin. So I had to melt some more cobalt in order to get enough for the tool binding and the pickaxe head. So I guess I'll find out how this works. but. Supposedly, it's supposed to have good durability, and it's supposed to be pretty fast. Also, it has a high mining level. A mining speed of 12, that seems pretty good. And somebody just died, again. This is not ideal. Well, I do have this book, and it tells me all about the different modifiers. I kind of want the pickaxe to be unbreakable, and there's a way I can do that at some point. I can't enchant it, I went and checked, so instead I enchanted a normal diamond pickaxe, and now I'm gonna go grab some obsidian. If I get 40 obsidian, that should be enough for five reinforcement modifiers. And if you manage to put all five of those on your pickaxe or some other tool, it will become unbreakable, which would be pretty cool. That's not a good noise. And you know what that noise might be? It might be a dragon in a dragon layer nearby. And that means that it might have a dragon egg because, well, one of the goals in this video is get a dragon egg and get a baby pet dragon. And the way that you do that is you have to find a stage four or five female dragon. 
and those only find you only find them underground and what do you know there's actually a dragon layer here look at all this charred stone and there it is it's a fire dragon I don't have the equipment to fight it right now but I guess I'll just shoot it with my crossbow one time and run away very quickly and come back later oh my god what is that lag uh, that's that lag might be from blocks breaking you know I think it's actually following me <laughs> it might not stay there maybe I shouldn't have shot it Oh no. Come on, horsey, we gotta go. Oh my god, the lag. No, yeah, it, it followed me out. It came all the way out from underground. No, my horse. Oh my god. I led it away from my castle and village. I started running toward there and then I realized that if I didn't go toward the swamp, I might lead it straight to my colony and it might obliterate it if I wasn't careful. I seem to have made it into the swamp though without being killed. It's still following me, but it's back there a little bit and it might have trouble getting through the trees. I think I'm far enough away. Yeah, there it is. Well, I'm already kind of far from my base, and I don't have very many crossbow bolts left. And since I need to kill that dragon now, plus another one if it's not a female dragon, I'm going to need more crossbow bolts. So I went and collected more peacock feathers before circling around in a big loop to go back home. What I need to do is make sure I don't go anywhere near that dragon. I need to have it not see me. And I need to get back to my house and grab fire resistance potions and whatever else I need. Well, I'm going in one of the side entrances to the castle, but I think I've made it without the dragon noticing me. I really don't want it to trash my castle. Anyways, there's a bunch of crossbow bolts that should be plenty for this dragon and any others that I might need to kill. Well, day 89, I'm gonna go get rid of that. It's my own fault I shot it, although at least now I'll figure out if it is a male or female. There it is. Let's start shooting. That is a much bigger dragon than the other ones I fought. It's a stage four, I think. I would kind of want to see how much damage this dragon does if I don't use my resistance. I might die, but I think it's worth it. That was a big oof, although that was a valuable learning experience. I realized I, I needed to have my strength potion because my sword wasn't doing a lot of damage because it had armor points and the sword has a debuff against armor. And now it is gone. And unfortunately, I don't think it's a female dragon. I would like to go check out its lair now that it's dead. There might be a lot of loot there. There actually probably is. I opened one chest and found mending diamond boots, so I like my chances of additional stuff. Of course, I still need to find another dragon and a female one specifically. Ooh, notch apple. That's pretty good. Even if there's nothing else, I'll take that. That's a great. I just realized I had meant to go get rid of the dragon corpse and get like the dragon blood from it, but then I forgot, so here I am now. I wasn't sure if it might have despawned for some reason. Why is there a tiny dragon skeleton here? It's kind of weird. Oh look, another notch apple. That's two notch apples. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of loot chests here. You probably see like, lots of diamond armor. It's kind of like end city loot. It's actually a little bit better than end city loot because you get notch apples. Well, I can't really carry all of this stuff with me right now, but I'll take what I can. 
Oh boy, it feels good to sleep. I even have another big dragon skull to stick on a part of my castle. So, like I said, I need to find another dragon underground, and the last one I found, well, I found because I was digging around and I heard a noise. I need to go find some kind of cave system that possibly will intersect with a big dragon lair. And I think those dragon layers are not super rare, kind of like the above ground ones, so it's not that hard to find, I guess. Plus, while I'm looking around for it, I get to find all kinds of other stuff, like other ore that I need. For some reason, there's salt here, red salt, mushrooms, lots of iron, more salt. I even found a villager here. I think it is an archaeologist villager who lives in a little dugout area underground. That's kind of cool. Not a lot of stuff here, but have fun, bro. Careful, there might be dragons nearby. And look at what I found, just what I was talking about. There is indeed another dragon lair nearby. Now, hopefully it is a female dragon, but we're about to find out. And this time I'm using my resistance scroll, which actually is resistance five this time. And I've got myself a strength potion, so I don't plan on dying. Let's go, I got it, and I had resistance 5, so I didn't take any damage. That's so overpowered. I guess I deserve that because I died the last one I fought. And it is, in fact, a female dragon, which means I got a dragon egg. Look at that right there. There's one dragon egg. One fire dragon. Soon to be my baby pet dragon. I also have a ton of fire dragon scales, so I feel the need to go ahead and make some fire dragon armor, which is a red version of the existing dragon skill armor. But most importantly, what everybody wants to see, what I want to see, we got to make this little area to hatch our dragon egg. So I guess I stick it in the fire. I don't actually need more than one piece of fire. And now the egg is sitting in there and will hatch after a couple minutes according to the wiki. I don't know how long that's actually going to be, but I guess I will sit here because I don't want to miss it. So I'm going to need a lot of dragon meals, which are how you can speed up the growth of the dragon because I need to get it to at least stage 3 quickly, which is the first stage at which you can start riding the dragon. Hello Mr. Villager, are you here to observe the dragon hatching? No, I guess not, okay. Oh, there it is, look at that! Look at that, there's a tiny dragon. And this is my own dragon now, because when you hatch an egg, it spawns as basically your pet. Oh, look at that. You can even pick it up and put it on your shoulder. That's so cool. It's a very small boy. So I got a lot of cooked meat when I was looting that big castle early in the video. And I'm glad I did because that's basically what you use to make dragon meal is you use bones and some kind of meat. And given that it takes 25 of these to grow from like stage one to stage two and then stage two to stage three, I need basically a minimum of 50 in order to get it quickly to stage 3. Now it's almost at stage 2, so I can still pick it up, but it's a little bit silly looking. Now it's stage 2, so we're getting there. It seems to really want to sit in this corner for some reason. Oh my god, why is my house breaking? Oh, wait, how, how, what? <laughs> Oh, okay, I realized it was actually a glitch. The game thought it was still on my shoulder for some reason, which is strange. I'm not sure why, but anyways, the problem is solved other than my house is missing its front now. It's a little bit unfortunate, but the dragon is happily flying around. I don't actually know where it's going to land. Oh, oh no, not the, ta not the church tower. Come on, bro. Oh, it just ate like half the tower. That's kind of unfortunate. This is why I need a dragon command staff thing to make it sit. 
All right, stay. Do not go anywhere. You're gonna sit right there, and it's gonna be great. Actually, it's stage three now, so I can just ride it. I can actually fly it off of here. It doesn't need to sit. Day 93, we have ourselves a flyable pet dragon. Uh-oh, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> well, I kind of need to fix the front of my house. But I also, there's lots of mobs outside that need uh, annihilating. Let's go see how the mine is coming along. I feel like not very much has been done. I, he's kind of mining weird stuff, but I guess we'll leave him be. Probably doesn't want to work if I'm sitting right next to him with the dragon. I might feel a little bit intimidated if I were him. Wow, you are really loud. So there's dragon armor. Like, you know, there's horse armor? Well, there's dragon armor, and it's a lot cooler than horse armor, but it takes diamond blocks, or blocks, I guess, of whatever you're trying to make the armor out of. Luckily, I know where a lot of diamond blocks are. Oops, I guess it can't climb stairs, that's good to know. And it ate the stairs for some reason, it didn't even drop them. Dragon, why did you eat the stairs? That's not very epic of you. I went over to that little castle next to the original ice dragon nest and decided to burn as much of it down as possible. Obviously the dragon's breath will burn blocks that light on fire, but it also turns stone blocks and other blocks like it into ash. And I think that if the dragon becomes big enough, and if you use enough dragon's breath, they might even be able to break stone with its breath. Anyways, I decided to spend the night on top of this big, like, dreadstone fortress thing, which I can't really get into without a key. I can't even break my way into it. I can break most other blocks by flying or walking the dragon into them, but I can't break into this dreadstone fortress, which is a little sad. Because in there, there's actually a partially completed dragon forge, dragon fire forge, although I think it's probably an ice dragon forge, which is not helpful because I have a fire dragon. What I did find, though, was another one of those big dungeon castles. And since a lot of those castles, or since there's a lot of food in those castles, I decided to use my dragon to annihilate the castle and collect all of the food from inside of it. Because I have uh, no more meat, and I need to grow my dragon more.
Well, look at that. It's day 100. There's not much castle left. And I have enough stuff for dragon meals. I've been making them a little bit as I go, but it actually only needs one more to become stage four. And now, <laughs> look at that. Now it is a big dragon. It's as big as the dragon that I initially killed and was killed by. I don't think there's much that can really threaten us anymore. Other than possibly another dragon. And it might have to be a large dragon to actually be of a threat. I don't really think a level or a stage like two dragon is going to do a lot. Remember this place? Remember this castle over here? And remember what was near it? We've been here before, you see. There was a fire dragon here that almost killed me early on in the video. And now I've come to return the favor because I have my own dragon this time. Well, once again, the dragon kind of got stuck in the water. I'm not sure why they like going to the water, and then the fire dragon sits there, and it's like, well, that might not be the greatest idea. It also looks like I completely fried all of the fish in this lake, which is kind of funny. <laughs> There's tons of fish in here. In this short span of 100 days, I went from cowering in fear at the first hint of a dragon all the way to obtaining my own stage 4 pet dragon, not to mention all the skulls around my castle are a testament to my dragon slaying abilities. Should I continue on this world, I plan to greatly expand my colony into a thriving settlement and with the help of my dragon, create a dragon forge so that I might craft the very best weapons. If you'd like to see 200 days in the middle ages, let me know down in the comments, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching, hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye!